Wow, I love this transition. Kaylin loved her mullet last time, so we decided to give her a real mullet. Thank you everyone for subscribing and liking. My last video received over 1200 views and I am so grateful. I want to get started with talking about what I'm doing here, but first, I just want to introduce the beats. That background noise that you're hearing, that's not from Apple. That is from my son, Michael Whitehead. We got a family affair going on here. I'm going to give you a minute so you can check it out. I just love when people create. It's one of my favorite things. Great job, Mike. So as you can see, I've done back-to-back -back highlights, 20 volume and lightener, and I applied it to the regrowth only. We didn't want to put anything on her scalp. It's been a little sensitive lately, but she's gonna manic panic it later. So that existing color, oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's Mo. The existing color in her hair right now is from the last application that she did of Manic Panic. It's actually really pretty, mint green. Now because we're working with a mullet, the point of difference of a mullet is obviously the front. So I want to start with the front. I want to put a lot of energy into this. I'm going to use a different technique than I did the last time, so bear with me. I'm going to use controversial scissors. So just stop for a second. Take a look at these chunkers that I'm holding in my hand. Now I can do a whole video on why I chose these chunkers and the difference between certain texturizers. Put some comments below if you'd like to see a little more information about that. But the reason why I like to use these is I can create solid lines choppy lines and the nice thing about this technique is I can use comb tension which is one of my favorites the reason why is because I'm working with Kaylin's natural hair growth pattern this just leaves a little bit of leniency if there is a cowlick or something in there that's going to jump up Home tension is forgiving, but it does give you a little bit of control. Afterwards, you'll see me pick up the hair using my fingers and creating more tension. Basically, all I'm doing is double checking my work at this point and getting rid of any of those last few bits. I'm trying to find a happy medium here. We went through and really thinned out Kaylin's hair the last time. And as it's getting longer, she wants to feel it thicken up a little bit. As I'm using my comb tension, you can see how I'm over directing. Right in through here. So I'm compensating in through that temple area where we have less hair and I'm over directing to maintain a little bit of length there. These bangs are going to be quite short. And although there's a strong line there right now, I will go through and form some texture afterwards. I think you guys remember from last time I talked about how the hair will automatically spill it in through the sides. And if you look and I comb down the sides of her hair, I'm going to pick up that little section there. It just automatically wants to part and I'm going to meet it to my guide which is the fringe that I just created. Now I am using more tension when I do this because I am over directing and I'm not too worried about going too short. Like I said, she wants this fringe to be 
kind of like a, a baby fringe, so I don't believe I can overdo it at this point. Now if you look into the top of the hair, you can see the amount of hair that I am taking into the fringe area. Now for this next part, you'll really see how comb tension gives us movement and like I said before, just the right amount of control. I'm taking my sections on a diagonal and I'm keeping my comb parallel to the section but I'm not using a lot of tension when I create this layering. Especially when you're working with the round of the head as we get up a little bit higher. The amount of tension you use is going to be important. Right in through here, I am still keeping my comb parallel to my party. I'm just gonna explain how I'm using full tension on this section, but I am pulling the hair back slightly from the temple to the side of the head. By doing this, I am compensating for the roundness of the head as well as the thinness around the temple. I want to be sure this is usually the area where you can end up with a hole in your haircut if you don't overcompensate. Now I'm just taking each section up and connecting the top layer to the fringe. I am angling my fingers slightly to allow for a little extra length in through the top of the head. I've got full tension happening right now because I will be going through and breaking up that top layer afterwards. I'm just repeating the same thing that I did to the right side of the head, now on to the left. Comb tension, sections are parallel to the comb, and then we're going to go through and just confirm the perimeter. and we haven't even chopped it up yet. Right now I'm using point cutting. I'm digging right in. Each section that I take, I'm giving a little bit of over direction, either towards me or away from me, depending on where I want to reduce bulk. Because I have created a strong enough perimeter, and I am using chunkier point cutting techniques, I can get right in there and still keep the integrity of the hair and keep it from looking too fine or wispy. Because the mullet is so short around the front, 
I'm able to go right into that perimeter and carve out around her cheekbone area. I am freestyling here. I am basically going in where I think I need to see less bulk, more precision, and less length. We want to be sure that when Kaylin's hair moves around that she's not going to have little tiny pieces floating that don't really have a rhyme or a reason. That's why it's important to always check your perimeter. As I lift the hair and I cup it around my fingers, this allows for a little bit more debulking. By cupping the hair, you're maintaining length on the underside and reducing bulk on the inside. Again, just checking her perimeter. I love letting the hair dry as I cut. Right away, you're gonna see any natural hair growth pattern that's gonna pop out. You're going to see the natural texture. You're going to see what your client is going to be faced with every morning when they wake up. And that's important because when you can see what their hair is doing, you can also help direct them on the best ways to style their hair. Now that we've finished the front, I added a little extra step in through the back. I didn't just start connecting the back to the sides. As you'll see, I created two extra sections about a half an inch behind the ear, depending on the density of the hair. You could go an inch behind if the hair is really thick. You're going to section off the longest part in the back. So check this out. These two sections on either side are going to marry the front to the back of the haircut. It's important that you treat these sections separately from the back layering. I'm going to section each section in half. And using full tension, I will comb it straight up and connect the layers to the longest layers at the back of the fringe. Because I'm using so much over direction, I'm going to maintain length in through that side, just above the ear. but I'm being very aggressive with the layers in through this area. Just to be sure that I get my right side the same length as my left, I'm going to pull the top section straight up, over direct towards the bang area. By over directing this section away from the back of the head, I am maintaining length in through the crown. You already know that's where a lot of cowlicks are going to be. I'm doing the same to the right side, over directing to maintain my length. 
using precision cutting to maintain strength. And this is going to create a very effective layer. One that connects the back and the front together in a disconnected way. I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, ask me questions in the comment section and I'll find a better way to explain it. Now I'm just going to go through and just double check to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'll admit I'm not a big fan of my background for this video. I am working on a new setup, but in the meantime, I had to post this video. It's just such a great look. I'm just going to release the ponytail and start bringing my sections full tension straight up. And I'm connecting that top layer with the back just by chewing through. This will help maintain my length and give a nice soft connection from top to bottom. As I'm cleaning up the perimeter, you can see how I'm pulling the hair from the center back to the side. By over directing the back to the side, I create a slight curve in through the perimeter of the hair, leaving the back middle at its longest point. Because I don't want to be standing in front of the camera and obstructing your view, you can notice how I'm threading my right arm through and flipping my wrist to create the technique. So right now I'm just going to go through with very little tension and be sure that I've caught all the little hairs that might be hiding in there somewhere. I want to be sure that there's enough weight on the hair that she's not going to have a problem. If she gets caught in a windstorm, it's still going to look fire. She loves it already. Just a little bit of customization. Yes, I love it. So does she. Wow, look at that. I am so happy with the results. We're currently in lockdown in Ontario, but as soon as that lifts, I'm going to be recording more tutorials with more models. So stay tuned and everyone take good care of themselves.